Hello, and thank you for renting our RV. This is a 2004 Sunseeker by Forest River. It's 31 feet long and can house up to 10 people. Let me show you inside. So you have two people in the driver and passenger with seat belts. There's a uh, recline. There's a seat with seat belts here. There's three seat belts positions here with a couch. There's the dinette with four positions. That equals ten uh, passengers that can travel in this RV. We have overhead storage here. We have games for uh, small children. This is just empty storage. This storage right here, it will house this book which is has instructions on how to do uh, pretty much everything. Um, it will always stay here in this area. Over here is uh, the, the first sleeping area which is the uh, over the head uh, cab bunk. It can house up to two adults. It's the, about the size of a full bed. Here we have this is the second sleeping position. You take off the armrests off the couch. And then you lift up and pull out. And then this can be a second sleeping position for two people. Okay. The third sleeping position is right here. You would remove all the cushions. Table a little bit. There's a little button that you push in, and then that way you can bring the leg out. You lift. It's a little bit hard. Now you lift up the. You lift up, and you bring it down. And then you put your cushions back on. Or sleeping position for two. In the back we have four quad bunks. Two in the bottom, two in the top. And that equals ten. And that sleeps ten. It comes with, it has plenty of storage with shelves for everybody. When you're lifting up the drawers, when you're pulling out the drawers, you have to lift up and pull out. Yeah, they're secured so they don't open up while you're driving. So it's a gentle pull up and down. And you have more storage on this side. You have a toilet with the sink. You push down on the pedal to flush the toilet. We also have little we ha packets that you can put into yeah, the so, toilet to keep it fresh. So once so once every uh, three or four days, you can put one of these down the toilet. To Just directly down the toilet. To keep the smell out. And then we have this water treatment for the sinks in the kitchen and in the sh in the bathroom and the shower to also keep down the smell. Um, if you're dumping regularly at the uh, at the dump station, you shouldn't have too much smell. We have some cleaning supplies up here, first aid kit here in the cabinet. The light is here. You can open up this vent as an exhaust fan. Please don't drive with it open. Um, if you drive with it open, uh, it will break it. Okay. The shower is here. You you pull down this this lock. This lock needs to be engaged while the vehicle is in motion. Here's the shower. The shower has a little on-off button here, so you want it to be on the little lines. 
and then if you're hooked up to city water you can just open it up and it'll the water will come out if you're do not if you're running if you're using water from the onboard tank you have to come here and turn on the pump which is this where it says water pump right here okay up yes up is on and down is off Okay, if you are connected to city water at a campsite or at somebody's house, do not use a water pump. The water pump plus the city pressure will cause leaks in the RV. So the water pump is only when you do not have access to, uh, to a hookup. Um, okay, so this is, you have two sinks. You have a gas stove and a gas oven. Um, you typically just turn it on like you would with uh, a little burner. Okay, it uses uh, LPG, which is uh, propane gas. You can uh, you can use Google to find the nearest LPG uh, gas station. Typically, U-Haul sites or uh, some campsites have. Uh, a the dispenser for the LPG it has a microwave the microwave only runs when you're either running the generator or you're on city water I'm sorry uh, a, a, a hookup this is the refrigerator right here the refrigerator is a very it's a RV refrigerator um, it's not like your like a house refrigerator um, it uses um, it uses a gravity feed system to cool it and it, it's a it's a heat absorption system instead of a refrigeration system so it is not going to be as cold as your house refrigerator so um, limit the number of times that you open and close the refrigerator um, and uh, there is a thermostat inside to, to for you to check the temperature uh, when running the refrigerator uh, you have uh, you can either run it off uh, uh, natural gas, the LPG, or of electricity. Um, you, you have, when you're turning it on, you would hit on, it would do a check, and then if you want it to run on automatic, you leave the button up or out. If you want it to run on auto, which means it'll either switch from gas when there is no electricity, or it'll run on electricity when there is electricity. Um, that way you can conserve your natural gas. Um, the, uh, the water heater is very small. It runs off the propane and it will heat up the water in the sinks and in the shower. To, to heat your water, you will turn this on, which is the first switch, this is water heater. The little red light will come on. Um, it'll stay on until the water is uh, hot and ready for you. So just wait until the light goes off. Um, the the tank is very small it is actually under here so it will not it, it, you won't have a lot of um, the tank is very small so you will not have a lot of hot water so if you're taking a shower you have to take a quick shower um, and then what you would do is turn on the water hot water uh, uh, rinse yourself turn it off soap yourself and then turn it on again and then rinse yourself off um, otherwise you're gonna run out of hot water um, in the middle of your shower it's not like a like a house where you can just have constant heat um, we have a, a television with uh, it has DVD capability it slides out like this and then you can angle it by adjusting the screw the the knob right here you can angle it up or down when, it, when you are traveling, it is best to keep it secured on the white pad that's installed here. So the bouncing of the, of the road does not affect it. The remote control is right here. And, this, um, it just, and you can switch from the source. You can use, um, when you are at a campsite, you can use the antenna. Uh, you cannot use the antenna when you're driving. The antenna will stick, has to go up and if you're driving with the antenna up you're going to break the antenna off or you're gonna catch it on a power line or a bridge or some uh, low-lying obstacle 
The way you raise the antenna is you gently turn it up until it goes all the way up. Okay, do not um, be very careful because this will break off. It's made out of plastic and then you will not be able to get the antenna done down. You can adjust the antenna by turning it this way. When you are bringing it down, make sure that the arrow is pointing to the both arrows are aligned and then gently bring it down. If you do not have the arrows pointed down, you will not be able to get the antenna down. And you have to do it very gently because this will break off. The handle will break off and you will not be able to get the antenna down. Okay? So um, this air vent is, is tied down for, at the moment and it uh, it's not working. But if it was working, it would work like this. You just, uh, when you're uh, at a campsite, you can just raise it up to get some fresh air. Okay. So the, here's the air conditioning unit. The air conditioning unit will only run if you're hooked up to a 30 amp circuit at a campsite or higher. Um, if you plug into a normal electrical outlet, it will not run. It will trip the breakers. It needs at least 30 amps. Another way you can run the air conditioning is if you're running the generator. If you're running the generator, you can run the AC. Um, if you don't have either the generator running or a 30 amp circuit, which looks like a plug for a uh, dryer, um, you will not be able to use the AC. Okay. The breakers are right here. These are the breakers. You always want to turn off the breakers when switching when switching uh, different systems. So if you're switching uh, at the campsite, you're switching from uh, the batteries to to the shore tie, which means what you know the hookup at the campsite. You have to turn it off, do your hookup, and then come back in and then uh, slowly start from the top and turn all the breakers and you will hear the microwave that was the beep and then then you'll hear um, the fan of the inverter the converter and the other breakers this is a safety for the kids so they, they don't go in um, uh, this is the emergency exit we have this here so uh, our little one doesn't uh, open it up while we're driving down the road but if you don't need, if you don't have a small child, you can just remove it. Um, the way to open the window is you pop these two latches open, and then you push out, and it will pop out. That's in case of an emergency only. There's smoke detectors. There's two smoke detectors. There's one here in the bedroom area. There's also a carbon monoxide detector uh, under here. And then out here, there is a second smoke detector and then a carbon monoxide detector right here, um, which is hardwired to the batteries. This is the battery disconnect right here, this little key. When, you, when, you don't, when you're driving down the road, this key must be engaged so you can have electricity and power um, as you're running off the house batteries. Okay, so to to slide the to slide the slide out, you uh, there's the key right here, the switch right here. It goes in and out. You would just put make sure that there's nobody obstacles like uh, picnic tables or cars or people out there, and then you would just push out, and it would slowly slide out. And then when you're ready to bring it back in, you make sure that there's no obstacles on the floor on the inside, and then you just slide it in. Okay, this switch right here is for a side light uh, to the outside. If you're ever having to do some work on the outside and it's in the in the afternoon or the evening, um, these are two master switches for the lights in the cab. Um, you can just leave them on. This is the Arctic Pack. Um, unless you're going to a very cold place like Alaska or anything, this just keeps your tanks, your water tanks, uh, warm. You don't really need that. Like I said, this is the water pump. 
unless uh, you are hooked up to a uh, you're not hooked up to a, to city water um, you wouldn't have this on and as you can see the water heater is the light went off that means the water is hot and ready to go you can go ahead and just turn it off this button is for to prime the the generator and to start the generator and to stop the generator so what you would do is you have to have the um, the Ford engine for the um, you know the, 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 the vehicle engine running um, for a minute or two to get fuel in the system and then you would hit down and for about 10 seconds you'll see this red light come on it would that, that would prime the system and then you would press up and then the generator would start um, let the generator run for a couple minutes make sure that you turn off the breakers before you start the generator um, once the generator runs for about a minute or two you can flip on your breakers again and then you can use the electricity as you as you need to okay uh, there's the heat the there's heat uh, in the cab available um, the heat runs off propane uh, it does use more than usual propane so uh, if you're running the heat um, you will have to refill your propane on a more frequent basis um, you would just turn the system on and then raise the temperature to whatever temperature you would like and then it'll come on and it'll maintain that temperature like I said it, the the heating system will use more propane than usual so you your tank will run uh, down quicker okay so um, we have this is just storage down here we have the plates okay microwave we have um, some pots and cu cooking utensils up here the pots and pans I are down here. Pots, pots mm -hmm. and pans are down here. Um, here's the, the silverware.